Welcome everybody, it's Lupac here with the first video in my Albion Online beginner tutorial series. Today, we're gonna look at the absolute basics of Albion Online, give you an introduction to the game and talk you through your very first steps as you enter the world of Albion. To preface this, I'll tell you that Albion Online is a full loot sandbox MMO. It is a focus on a PvP and player driven economy system for the game. And the game is not free to play. That's one of the biggest questions I get asked. You do need to purchase a starter pack to play Albion. The starter packs start at $30, assuming there's no sale on. And there's a middle pack and a top tier pack for $100. With the game's economy already a year in, there really isn't much reason to go for the highest tier pack. However, you do get your $100 worth of premium subscription time and in-game currency. So you're not losing out if you buy the $100 pack, but you can easily just buy the $30 pack and upgrade whenever you feel like it if you want to get those bonuses. You can get a free seven day trial for Albion if you want to try it out and see if it is a game that you're going to like. If you want one of these trial keys, you can check out the Albion Online subreddit, uh, the official Albion Discord, or you can come to one of my live streams and ask for a trial key. We'll hook you up. We have got your back, don't you worry. Right, the first thing you're gonna do, once you've registered your pack and you're into the game, you're gonna need to create a character. Now, you can choose an avatar, which is like your face and your look in the game when you're naked. A lot of the time, you'll be hidden behind armor. You can also choose your sex here. You'll notice that there's very basic customization in the game. It's not too in depth, but don't you worry because absolutely nothing is different in this game. Like different sexes, there's no there's no races with different stats. Everybody just starts as a generic player. Now I'm going to use the reverse of my name for this is this is a brand new account kindly provided by Sandbox Interactive for me to use for these videos. So thanks to those guys. So don't worry too much creating your character. You can't go back and ever change your look. So make sure you like the look of your character. Although the customization is very basic, you know, some people still like to do that, but there's no, there's no race to pick. There's no stats to worry about. And you'll also notice if you played other MMOs, you'll notice that you do not pick a class in Albion. Albion Online is a classless game. Your character's class is dictated by the equipment you're wearing and have unlocked. So everybody starts on the same playing field as a brand new adventurer wearing nothing but a piece of cloth. If you want to know about creating alts, you can check out my should you create an alt video coming to the beginner series very, very soon. Uh, but just as a side note, if you are a hardcore MMO player, you know in your head if you're the type of person that takes a game really, really seriously. If you are, then I would advise at the time of character creation, you probably also want to create two alternate characters and give them premium as soon as possible. For more info on that, check out our video on alts. Right, first things first, we're gonna go through the various UI features, talk about the terminology, the different currencies of Albion, talk about PVP and how you get started. Moving around is fairly simple. It's quite an intuitive system. Right click does a lot of things, including here moving around, punching rabbits and stuff like that. Just get a feel for how it moves. It's kind of an action-based MMO, so reactive skills, activated abilities, that sort of thing. You can see here already lots of people looking for groups and stuff. The game population is very healthy right now, but it's anticipated to grow quite a bit with Steam launch as well. So we're going to look through some of the UI buttons. Over here, you've got your character panel. Uh, you can open your stat screen and you can see Capwell here is zero at every single thing. He's never killed anybody, as you can see on the kill board. You can see the death board. You can see the brand new achievements panel. And you can actually get a link to any character's kill board. So if you're looking at another player, you can click them here and open their stats and your own stats are available here. You can change your avatar at any time and you can also unlock other avatars as you get achievements in the game. So your avatar can be changed whenever you want. Your character's physical appearance, however, cannot. 
The little plus below your name is the invite to party. So if you ever want to group up with another player, you can do it by typing their name manually in the party. You can also right click them here in the chat box if you want to invite them or if you're targeting them directly, you can right click them up here and click their name and invite them to the party. Next up, we've got the arena button, which you definitely won't need to worry about right now. The arena button signs you up for 5v5 non-loot arena battles, either solo queue or group, but that's probably how you're going to get your first taste of the 5v5 PvP in this game. We'll talk about that in a future video, and uh, all the builds and info you need for getting into that side of the game. But right now, we're still naked, we have no weapon, and we've got uh, simply a loincloth on. Right, the next button here is the inbox. And most new players will find that you're gaining your rewards for activating your starter pack here. It gives you a little email to tell you they've come. And if you want to claim your rewards, you'll see they're available here. So what we're going to do, we're going to claim our bits and bobs. And that's going to give us 30 days of premium. Now, you want to activate premium as soon as possible. Uh, a lot of people say to me, oh, can you play without premium? You know, if I don't want to spend money. Yes, you can physically play the game without premium. You will be allowed to log into the game and you can play. But you will progress very, very slowly compared to somebody with premium. Therefore, you should always have premium on your characters. If you don't have premium on your characters and you don't have money to buy premium, what you should do is you should make your immediate goal in the game to earn enough silver for premium. That is correct. You did hear me right. You can pay your premium subscription with in-game currency that you make simply by playing the game. In fact, I would go so far as to say that a lot of the players in the game actually sustain their premium on all characters simply through gameplay and not using real money. So there's the mailbox. Next up is your inventory screen. You have a few bits of information here with a pop-out stats pad as well. This shows the items you have equipped in your main slots as well as your cape, your bag, your food, your potions, and your mount. You also have a limited number of inventory slots for carrying extra stuff in your backpack, and you can see your carry capacity here. Better mounts and better bags, as well as certain food and equipment, will allow you to carry more stuff. To the left of it, we, hear, we see the two currencies of Albion. There's two currencies available, silver and gold. You can see I have no silver and I have 2,000 gold. Now, a lot of people see two currencies in a game, a standard currency and a premium currency, and they immediately go, oh, that's it, that's pay to win, cash shop only, special items, premium currency that you can only buy with cash. No, this is, this is a pay to win game. Now you can easily be forgiven for having that thought process because so many games follow that model now, but I'm pleased to tell you Albion Online is not one of those games. Gold is indeed used to buy premium subscriptions and other certain cosmetic only items in the game, but there is a gold exchange, which you can find at this button here. So you can actually buy and sell gold with silver. You can see you can purchase gold with real money and the value of doing that is based on the player driven gold economy. But you can once you get to journeyman adventurer, you are able to trade gold into silver and vice versa. So it is not a premium currency that is locked behind a paywall. Also, you'll see that as well as subscribing to the game via a monthly subscription for real money, you can actually pay your payment in gold or silver once you reach Journeyman Adventurer, which doesn't take too long, as you're going to find out. So that is the premium subscription and the currencies explained to you. We'll carry on looking around the UI. Next up is the guild shortcut. Once you're in a guild or if you're looking for a guild, you will find this. It will tell you what battles your guild has upcoming. The members list will be over here. Or if you're not in a guild, you can use this UI to actually search for guild or even create your own if you fancy leading something brand new. We then have the building UI, which is this icon here, the shortcut H. This will actually let you place buildings and other stuff on your personal island or on areas that you own, such as player controlled farms and town plots. For now, though, we're not going to be worrying about this because we don't have any land to build on. So just to let you know, that button is there. We've already looked at the gold market, the premium. Here is a friends list, very self-explanatory and 
is as found in many, many MMOs. You can add friends here, and then it gives you the option to delete friends. You'll see when they're online. You'll see when they were last online as well. So if somebody goes inactive, you'll see it there. There is a ranking page here where you can find the rankings of players in the game for various ranking metrics such as fame, silver collected, resources collected. You can also find guild rankings to find out who owns the most territories, who's getting the most kills in a week, stuff like that. You can filter them by week, this week, last week or all time. And then you can do the same for the alliances in the game. Again, this is all like the high end of the game, the sort of top level of players who are running these big organizations. As you progress around the world, You'll notice that certain areas are controlled by certain guilds. You can see certain alliances holding territory and fighting each other for control of the stuff. But for now, you're just a little dude with dreams of making it big in Albion. So don't worry too much about the guilds. You can actually see, though, the rankings from the current season and previous seasons. So you can see who the powerful guilds are. And this can actually give you a clue of whether you should run away if you see them running angrily towards you in PvP zones. That said, when you are a brand new player, although Albion is a full loot PvP MMO, don't worry too much. You're not going to be attacked and killed within three seconds of starting the game. In fact, the game will warn you before you go into any PvP zone. You will begin your journey in one of the landing places of the five biomes. There's five types of territory in Albion. We have the mountains, which are the snow zones. You see down at the edge, we have certain other starting zones, the forest, which is unsurprisingly a forest, the steppes, which is a desert biome, you have the highlands, which is a plains kind of biome that focuses on stone, and the swamp biome, which is full of lots of creatures and fiber and stuff like that. The biomes dictate what resources and what wildlife you will find. Um, if you want more details of how you should read and understand these map things, there is a beginner's guide to maps in this series, which you should go and check out. And that will explain how to read all of the information presented by the map tiles. The final button we'll look at up in the corner is the settings button here you can find game settings you can claim rewards you can purchase trial keys for your friends or you can log out and close the game there are a couple of other things you will need to know m will bring up the world map at any time where you can look around that's the key m and the key n will bring up the local map where you can find information about your tile and actually see any points of interest. As you can see in the starting tile, there's very little in there, just a small island and a workbench. This is to keep it simple for new players as they begin their journey. A screen where you're gonna spend a lot of time is the destiny board. You can find this by pressing B on your keyboard and you will see that as a brand new character, we haven't unlocked anything just yet and there is a lot to do here on the destiny board. I'll give you a brief overview, but don't feel daunted by the Destiny board. You'll quickly understand what means what on the Destiny board and how to progress down it. There is no classes in Albion. You unlock whatever you want by using the relevant equipment. You can level anything you feel like and create your own bizarre build combinations if you wish. No, unlocking any ability will not lock out the ability to unlock anything else. So in theory, you could unlock everything in the game, although it would take you a phenomenal amount of time. The first thing you'll do as a new player is progress through the adventurer's tutorial bar, which is this central one going up here. And eventually you will become a novice adventurer at which point your journey into Albion really begins. Now, there's not such thing as levels. It's not a level-based system, but there are two core trees that will determine the average level of your character. So on the top here, we see this adventurer tree. Every time you gain fame of any sort, you will progress up the adventurer tree until you reach Elder Adventurer, which is tier eight, the maximum tier. Adventurer level will determine what mounts you can ride, what tools you can use for demolition, what bags and capes you can wear, and will unlock some unique avatars as you go. The other core tree to look at is the Reaver level. The Reaver level 
gives a rough guide as to a player's PvE or player versus environment level. This is for fighting monsters and the NPC inhabitants of Albion. And as you kill more monsters, you will go up the Reaver level and this will unlock the ability to get bonuses against monsters of certain tiers all the way up to tier eight. You can fight things higher than your Reaver level. That's not forbidden likewise you can go to zones higher than your adventure levels the game is a sandbox it will never hard lock you out of content but if you go and fight tier 8 or tier 7 monsters when you're still reaver level 4 you're gonna have a very very bad time so this is good to uh use as a rough guide to what monsters you should be fighting at a given time when you're looking to progress in fame on the left hand side we can see all of the different unlocks for weapons and armor so you have your warrior plate armor and weapons here your leather armor and sort of leather bruiser weapons here and your cloth armor and mage weapons and offhands over here then we have the farming and potion making and breeding line this is stuff you can do on your island and in the cities where you can create your own food, raise your own mounts and animals, and craft food and potions. Down here, we have the gathering line. This will show you what you can gather in the world of Albion, the level of tools you can use, and how proficient you are at gathering various resources. And right next to it, we find the refining. So each tool refers to a certain resource. Those resources will then need to be refined into their usable form before they can use these trees over here, which are the crafting trees. This is how players turn resources into the items that you'll buy, find, scavenge, and steal as you journey around the world of Albion. First things first then, we need to progress along the beginner's tree all the way to novice adventurer. You'll notice in the right hand of the screen here, we have an objective. Now this is the destiny board tracker. You can manually track certain things as you unlock them to see your progress. You can make it bigger or smaller as you prefer. But to start with, it acts as a pseudo tutorial. And as you can see, it's saying, can we gather three rough logs? And yes, we can. We make our way over to some trees and by hand, we gather some logs. Now, left clicking is the default way to do gathering in this game so you go to a resource and you gather it the bottom tier tier one can be gathered with your bare hands but as you progress through the game certain things will need specialist tools and equipment to gather them so if you want to be gathering the top end of stone for example you would need to unlock the whole stone tree and you would need a tier eight stone hammer to be able to refine it. Then it tells us that we need to go and craft our first tool. An easy way to simplify it on the Workbench UI is only show things you can craft. That means things that you don't have the resources to craft will be grayed out, or you can leave it like that so you can see what you need in the future. So you can see here, we can't craft these because we don't have any leather. Right, so we're going to craft a beginner's skinning knife as instructed by the tutorial. And you can see we now have that equipped appears in our inventory we actually doesn't do a lot of damage 22 damage but it's better than your bare hands i guess it doesn't have any activated abilities now we need to gather some hide which is done by slaughtering poor innocent bunny rabbits and skinning them for their hide so right click to attack left click to skin get those guys down there and then we go back and it wants us to craft a mercenary jacket while you're doing this, I actually would advise crafting all three pieces if you can. I don't know if it tells you to do that, but we'll see. Uh, now it says make a broadsword. We do already have the resources for that, so we'll make a broadsword. Now you will uh, get your first taste of Albion's MOBA-style combat system. So you'll see when we equip the broadsword and the jacket, we actually start to get some spells. The spells you use in the game are determined, are determined by what armor you're equipping and using and what weapon you're holding. So we can see here that this armor piece has the mend wounds ability, which lets us regenerate when we're out of combat by channeling a spell. And the sword actually has the option of beginner strike or beginner's cleave. So we can either do an AOE ability or a direct damage attack. So there we go, and equipping that completes the quest. And they want us to go and use the ability on 
the target dummy. Now, changing abilities or food or potions or equipment will trigger what is known as the long global cooldown, which is, you'll see here, actually, if we come out of combat with the dummy real quick, if we take our chest off and put it back on, it puts all our abilities on cooldown for a few seconds. There's also a short global cooldown when using abilities. So bear that in mind when you're trying to chain combos together that you have to wait for the global cooldown between abilities, as well as each ability having its own cooldown time. As you unlock more items of armor and weaponry, you'll find that there's more abilities to choose from and the variety of builds you can use increases. You can also unlock special skills for certain pieces of equipment as you get further into them. So we see here, as you level quarterstaff, you unlock the heavy cleave ability, a life leech passive, the forceful swing ability, dread laden fighting. So as well as being able to use higher tier equipment, you actually also have to unlock certain high-end spells and abilities. Next up, it tells you to craft all of the tools and armor and move on to the next zone. But that'll get you through your first steps for now, guys. If you want the follow-up video, check it out on my YouTube channel. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to leave a like and subscribe and comment for any topics you'd like me to cover in the future.